But it's good to have joy. It's good to have the love of God. Um, I was reminded this, reminded this week just how uh, important it is to remember to give thanks and, and to walk in joy. And, you know, sometimes not to take life too seriously, you know. It's kind of funny. I'm thinking about this. It's, it's Disney. We went to Disneyland this week. I went to D- Disney World a few years ago. Um, and I want to clarify, too, because I enjoyed Walt Disney, and I enjoy what the legacy he has left and how amazing God did things in his life to want to help people, to make people happy. Because there's Walt Disney and there's Woke Disney. And unfortunately, there's been a, a, a bad takeover and things that are being pushed that are wrong and wicked. But I still appreciate so much of the things that God did in Walt's life. But I remember times of being at Disney World and God being like telling me, like, I'm on the ride, let it go on Frozen. And I'm feeling the anointing of God and the presence of God as I'm riding when she's seeing let it go. And I'm like, what are you, why am I feeling pregnant? What are you saying to me? It's like, you need to let it go and chill out. You know, when you're uptight at Disney, you got some issues, right? So sometimes God will tell us, chill out, relax, you know. And um, we were at Disneyland this last week. It was great. I have good memories uh, at, at Disneyland. And unfortunately, some of the things, you know, in the company aren't, are, are, are really, really bad, really wicked, and I'm praying against. But we were there, and I have good memories. I remember when I was little, I remember going with my dad, and I remember being at uh, Main Street in the Electrical Parade at night. Actually, one time I got lost there. I think I've told that in church before. I got lost. That's a good, but God's given me a really good sermon out of that one. That's cool. You're in the kingdom, and then you see your father. It's really good. That's another time. But then another time, I remember... Just vividly, I have memories, you know, like I remember being on his shoulders and we're walking past the crowds of the parade and Pete's dragging the dude up there and he's waving and I'm a little kid on my dad's shoulders making sure I don't hit my head on the awning on Main Street. I remember being on the teacups and going as electrical parades going and watching and seeing Captain Hook's ship go by and the cannon going. I still remember that as a kid. And uh, this past week at night, we were sitting there having some ice cream and it was kind of late. And we should be getting in the car and going home. And I said, you know what I want to do? Because everything's piling up. You got, they got like Fantasmic going on, Let's Go Pray to All Stuff. All, and I'm like, we're going home right now? No. Let's go get in line for teacups and watch the parade as it goes by. And I saw the pirate ship come by again as I was on teacups. And I hadn't done that since I was a little kid. And I went right back to being a kid, and it was a blast. And... Uh, and, uh, you know, I had fun. I had fun with my kids doing that. And then we walked by Fantasmic, saw the pirate ship. Then we got out of there right before the whole crowd. It was, it was great. It was perfect. Everybody's exhausted, but it's a good memory. And it's fun to be like a kid. It's fun to be like a kid. And um, this week, I was watching a movie that I've never seen, but I heard my parents talk about when I was younger. It was an older Walt movie from 1959. And it was the movie Pollyanna. Has anybody ever seen that? So I'd never seen it. Oh, my goodness. What a good movie tearjerker, but a good movie. And this week when I was at Disneyland, I was going through security and I could smell food. And I said to the workers to be nice, like, oh, you know, one thing Disney's been known for, just so you know, their workers, people want to learn how they'd model their business because of the legacy that Walt left behind of how to treat people right, how to do things with excellence, keep things clean, be smiling, be courteous, be loving. Someone's a jerk to you, you love them back. You care for them. And that's what people experienced with Disney employees that they wanted because he was actually releasing kingdom principles into his company, and people didn't know what it was, but they wanted it. And this week, I went to a worker, and I said, that food smells good. And he goes, yeah, I can't eat it while I'm in costume. Well, that's not Walt Disney. This is woke Disney. I experienced something a little different. If I'm offending you, get over it. So... <laughs> just you got it so anyway <laughs> I'm just done. He, he, I was watching the, or I'm talking I'm going what and I went to the next worker and said the same thing he said the same thing I was trying to have a nice conversation with the guy and they were complaining which I know was not allowed and was not in the culture before something's changed but we need to make sure that that doesn't change in our culture that we're not people of complainers when someone gets around a believer they go we need to operate like the body of Christ a place of love a place of encouragement, a place of joy, and a place where you experience the goodness of God and thankfulness, not complaining. And that's what I want to have, and that's what I want to be. And uh, I watched this movie, Paul. I didn't plan on watching it. I know it was the Lord. I just, because I had an entire different thing for today. It's Pentecost, which it relates, but, you know, Pentecost is a neat time. This is the day where the Holy Spirit outpoured and they experienced the mighty presence of God. 
and you still can and have the outpouring, walk in power, and they're speaking and praying the Spirit and speaking in tongues, and, and they were drunk in the Spirit. But, you know, if we don't have love, what's the point? And I'm watching this movie, Paulie, and I didn't, I don't know, I, I turned it on because I wanted something on while I was waiting to figure out what to watch. And then I got sucked in. And so we watched it. When my kids start watching, I'm like, oh, this is kind of a good movie. I'm sucked into this. I start watching, and everybody's a jerk to her. Like, they're jerks to her. Like, she doesn't deserve it. She's an orphan, or she lost her parents. She's been poor. She comes to her rich aunt's house, and they're just mean to her. And it's like, what is your problem? And she responds to all of them by being super positive, kind, and loving. And I didn't even know there's a phrase called don't be a Pollyanna or whatever, Pollyanna. Anybody hear that? You're being a Pollyanna. Okay. I wasn't around in 59, just so you know. So, but uh, I still experienced the power in the movie and the message. And I like to be called a Pollyanna. I like to be transformed from a caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly. I remember your sermon on Butterfly of Love. Remember that? Was that a couple years ago? And about being transformed, metamorphosis. You like you could my dad could come up here and give you the whole sermon. It'd be great. Go back and look it up. What's it called? You know, <laughs> the power of love. But um, she goes and everybody she encounters. I've seen this movie. It's amazing because when someone's a jerk to me, how many want to be a jerk back? Maybe you don't. Okay. I was watching According to Jim last night. I can relate. It's an older movie. I like watching older TV series. I like watching the older ones because they don't have a lot of the garbage that's on now. Older movie with Jim Belushi or TV series. And this one was called Rage or I don't know. And someone upsets Jim in the, mo- in the show and he'll come out and quit playing your loud music. Rip his shirt off and go crazy, you know. And then someone there goes, oh, I know what he's got. IMS, irritable male syndrome or whatever. When you reach this age and this, it's not his fault. It's a disease and this and that. And he's like, oh, no, it's not. And he has to go to his anger management class because he gets in a fight with the cop with his rage. And he's in the class. And as he's there, he's sitting there. He's like, I'm not, I don't have this stupid. It's not a disease. Do you know that? And they're like, well, you know, if you have this. You can go to a movie theater where ushers throw out anybody that talks in the movie so you don't get mad. We make sure there's no ITs. What's an IT? Irritation triggers around you. They'll block your calls. You mean spam calls? Yes, because you can't have any ITs. What about your wife's calls? Especially your wife's calls. Like, he's like, I have IMS. I have it, you know. And this whole thing is just, it's hilarious. And then he, like, he tells his wife, finally, he's like, look, I don't have it. I have J-I-M. You just married a jerk. Like, <laughs> but we're not called to live like that. We're called to live in love, to not respond like that. When you have the Lord in you, he wants to transform us and not say, that's my personality. That, you know who I am. I just don't like people. What? You can't love Jesus and not like people. Well, it's my personality. Then change it to Jesus's. Be like him. Don't make it, well, I have this, or I have this type of personality. I have this disorder. no. You have the love of God deep in your heart, and you have a choice to yield to it or not. Amen? Amen. And I'm looking at at, at this movie, and I'm watching her, and it's so neat because everything about Walt, to me, explodes out of the movie. It's it's like early 1900s, like Main Street is, and you see this, but you see the message of just she goes to help people that are poor, and they're mean to her, but she loves on them still. And it's just positive. And it reminds me of Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus is like, he talks about, look, look, anybody... A non-believer can be nice to someone who's mean to, to, nice to them, right? A heathen can be like that. What about when someone is wrong to you? Love them, pray for them, bless you. That's what a believer is to do. Anyone can love someone who's nice to them. And it's something we need to walk in. You know, one of the biggest battles to it is knowledge. One of the biggest battles to walking in love is knowledge. What do you mean? It's knowledge that you get about somebody It's knowledge of what they've done to you. It's knowledge about things in their life. And when you get knowledge, it can mess you up. See, the Bible says that love, it says knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. What does that mean? Knowledge can actually puff you up and make you become prideful. When you get knowledge about what someone's done, or even you just have more knowledge in somebody in a situation, you can become, we got to watch out that we don't become prideful and arrogant. And even in church, well, I was saved, and now I know this, and I don't deal with that, or I don't do... You become, it's very easy to become prideful and arrogant, and you don't even see it, and you need to ask God to constantly show you. I say, Lord, show me what's wrong with me, because I haven't been listening to my wife when she tells me. <laughs> but no, seriously, Lord, show me. What needs to change? Because God wants us to walk in love and not be prideful, judgmental, harsh, because that's religion. I hate religion. 
You know, I'm a pastor that hates religion. You're a what? I'm a pastor that hates religion. That harshness, that, that judgment, judgmentalism of just being condemning towards people when you forget that you needed a savior and still do every day. And when you think about how he is, that love, Ephesians 3.19 says we walk in the love of Christ. The love that passes all knowledge. See, I'm cool with somebody till I have knowledge of what they've done against me. Right? And it can make us harsh and judgmental towards people and we don't even realize we're doing it. And one of the hardest things is to be loving towards someone when you know they're wrong, they're being wrong towards you, and they don't know they're wrong, and you're trying to prove you're right, but you need to not prove you're right, but instead go beyond the whole knowledge, fly over the eating of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil about them, and you just straight up choose love. You choose life. The tree of life, the tree of love, where you're flowing in love over the knowledge, because that's how Jesus walked towards me and all of us. How many times have you gone to him and said, Lord, forgive me? He says, no. Never. But the great wickedness is receiving that and not passing it on to another. And so, I, well, I don't, I forgive everybody. I just don't like them. I just don't want to be around them. I just don't want to talk to them. I just don't want to hang out with them. And I'm not saying, obviously, you want to be wise and, and trust is one thing, but if we can't, if you think of someone and you can't be loving towards them genuinely from your heart, from your heart, then there's something that God needs to do in our heart. And you need to ask him to work that work in you. Because you go, I can't. You're right. You can't. But when you yield and ask God and you yield to that love that he's put in you, he put his love in you when you received Jesus. Did you know that? And you can yield to that love. And his love is so great. Think of him. He's perfect. He's righteous. And he goes to help people. And the very people he helps, they go from saying, Hosanna, woohoo to turn their back on him and crucifying him. I think you can probably relate to that. You know what it's like being a pastor? I see my dad pour into people, love on people. They make mistakes. They do things that have been way harsh. They should have been cut a long time ago. I've seen stuff they did that's very wicked, wrong, and he loves them through it. He spends his whole day. He does all kinds of sacrificing, and that same person will go and post something evil against him on social media. And he's called to love them. And it's not one person. It's more than he can probably remember. I'm talking, this is real. Too many people want to chat on the thing. Cowards. Cowards. You're a coward. If you do this to people and you talk bad about people online and you're not saying to their face and loving them, coward. That's right. I said it. We need to walk in love and encourage people and strengthen people. This is a message from the Lord. My idea was to talk on Pentecost. But Pollyanna grabbed me, and God grabbed me. I woke up yesterday morning just thoughts flooding my mind about God's love and how he wants us to be. Imagine someone walking in the door, and they get overwhelmed with the love of God. Walking in, that's why I love prophetic culture. Why do I like prophetic culture? Because prophetic culture, when I like, I like talking to someone, prophesying, and, I'm, and I'll tell people stuff. You know, sometimes I'll pray for people down here. I can tell them stuff going on in their life. Or they'll say, pray for this person. I'll be like, I know what's going on in that person's life. This is what they're like, this and that. That's cool. But it's not about me knowing that. It's about releasing the love of God and how much he loves and cares about them in that situation. That's why I enjoy it. I'm going to come in and we have such a prophetic culture. People go, wow, I see this in your life. And what? Because when God prophesies, it's encouraging. It's edifying. That means building up. And it's comforting. That's what 1 Corinthians says. Chapter 14, it says, it, it talks about how when you pro, the, the prophecy is encouraging, building up, and it's comforting. Because when God's speaking, that's what he does. And someone walks in, and you, there might be someone completely wrong in someone's life, but God says, I see this in you. And you call it forth, and it comes out. Isn't that awesome? That's prophecy. I love it. And it's the love of God that just smashes people. And they're like, a lot of times people cry because it's amazing to see how much God loves you and he sees the good when no one else does. He sees the good when no one else does. And it, it, it calls forth, and there's actually a type of anointing, you know, where Jesus walked in this. And he would say, he, there's times where you can walk in an anointing that's, hey, I rebuke this or I condemn this to go. There's the other type where you don't even address. You don't even address the foul thing. 
You don't say death go away. You just simply say, Lazarus, come forth. You go to the woman at the well, and yes, there's a word knowledge about what's going on in life with these guys. You don't even address that. You just say, drink of me. Drink of me. There's a woman of adultery, and he doesn't even address it. He just says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He get, it's that power. It's God sees the darkness. He doesn't say, darkness, I rebuke you. He says, light be, and there's light. That's the power. Of, it's, it's that when you speak to the good. And that's what I saw in Pollyanna that there was a point just really, it, it overwhelmed me when I saw, when she'd say, I play the glad game. And because I want to be more thankful. I don't want to be a complainer. I want to be thankful. And, it, and, I, and I'm working on this, but part of it is meditating on scriptures and the love of God and meditating how he is because as you get in the word, it will transform you. When you have the spirit of God and the word of God daily, you cannot not be transformed. And I want this and I see her and, and, and she says, well, my dad taught me the glad game. When something bad is going on, I just think of how I can be glad, what I can be glad for. We call it the glad game. And she had, she wanted a doll, but instead they sent her crutches. She was, her dad was a missionary. She's out in the field and she wanted a doll real bad and instead she gets crutches. What in the world? She's like, well, I was glad that I wasn't using them. I mean, just always thinking. She'd go to a lady that was planning her <laughs> funeral Oh, I'm just going to die. It was just mean and bitter, right? Some of you see, you remember this. And Pollyanna just loves on her, gives her a purpose, calls forth that purpose, speaks out the good. Why don't you stitch this blanket and help somebody? As long as you're in a bad situation, the best thing you can do is be a help to someone else. Get the attention off yourself and start giving and loving towards people. And she calls us forth in her, and there's a guy there trying to sell her a casket, and she's planning and buying her casket if she's alive. Pollyanna's like, what are you doing? You're not going to die. And that guy was okay selling it. Now, that's the love of money. you got to be careful because you can have a lot and not have a love of money. You can have hardly anything and have a love of money. So be careful, too, how you judge people. Walt had a lot of money. He didn't have the love of money. That was so special about that place. He, he, you can read his quotes. He said, it was never about making a quick buck. I was out to fulfill a purpose where families could come together and be happy. It was about God put a purpose in his life. And about fulfilling that. And yes, money was a part of it. Great provision. Walt had a Gulf Stream. But it didn't have him. And you can be, you know, anyway, that's a little fun side note for you. But Paul Ann, she loved this lady with the casket. And, all, and the lady ends up serving and getting involved. She goes to an older guy's house. You can watch the movie for yourself. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But it's just neat because... There's a lot of little things in there. One time, a guy said to this lady, he said, you can give and not love because she had been helping the community, the Harrington lady, right, but not loving. And that hit me because you can even tithe or be a giver, but not a cheerful giver. And God loves a cheerful giver. And there's times I think I've given out of uh, duty and out of sowing, out of belief, and that's okay, and I want to do that. But I want to also, every, I want, every time I give, I want to give out of the genuineness, excitement and love and joy out of my heart. I'll be real with you. When I was getting my pilot's uh, instrument rating, my instructor, I was there and he had these Bose headsets. They're really nice. They have noise canceling. They're great for an airplane. I didn't, but I'm like, those are nice. And he's like, yeah, one of my students gave them to me. And I thought, how much we're paying you an hour? Why would they give you something on top? I'm just being real. That's cheap, Jim, you know? But the love of God, Jim, compels you to give out of the genuineness of your heart. And you can get why someone would do something like that because they genuinely love, they genuinely are thankful, and it's genuinely a joy to give from your heart, not just out of an obligation to go, well, I'm going to do my duty. Keep, your, keep it to yourself. How would you feel if someone said, here's, here's your birthday present. It was my duty. Hey, hey, pal, just, just take that. I'll be all right. I don't, I don't need your $5 McDonald's. Thank you very much, okay? You want a joyful gift. How much more? Do you think, do you think our father's any different? Here you go. Here you go. I got to give my tithe. I know you'll provide some way, I hope, somehow. Oh, there's that poor guy. I, don't, I feel guilty. I don't want to give, but I know you're looking. <laughs> Just keep your money in your pocket. Really? Stay poor by holding on to it. Yeah. Or we can be a genuine giver. I'm being real because times it's been it, that those thoughts have crossed my mind. It's been out of routine, or I've had those thoughts. But I know every time I'm yielding the spirit of God and walking in the love of God, it just flows. And that's what I want to do. I want to have his heart and his mind about people. Because then you don't just see someone asking for money. 
you see somebody who Jesus died for. You see someone's kid. And then you prophesy and you see how God sees them. And you know, it's only about the money. The money is just your ticket to get in to release the love of God to them. And they're like, oh, it's only 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 5 bucks to release love into you? An opportunity for you to be saved forever? Game on! It's an entirely different outlook, isn't it? And you don't think heaven's not going to fund that ministry? Huh? But it's changing our perspective. And I want God to continually transform me to the Pollyanna perspective. We're telling our kids now, Pollyanna, what would Jesus do? I just say Pollyanna. Because you see the same modeling. It was so amazing. And she looked at the good, and, and she said, my dad had a quote here that helped him as a preacher because he dealt with the congregation. Oh, murmur, 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 right? You know what, though? People can look at a congregation, they can say a bunch of this and that, or you look at a congregation, you can see all the diamonds. There are, you look around the stream, you can say, what are they doing in here? Or you can look past anything you know, know and have knowledge and see the diamond inside of them. Because everybody in here, if you want to see the Lord more clearly, you can see him in the people around you. But when you refuse to see him in the people around you, you actually will miss attributes of, attributes of God. Like you'll see someone, you'll go, wow, they love art, creativity, and you realize, God put that in them. Wow, they have joy and laughter. That's from God. Oh, dad jokes? That's probably from our dad. <laughs> Jesus was an artist. God did creation. You can see all kinds of neat things there. But anyway, the quote her dad had was, to this, because there's a preacher that's preaching hell every Sunday. Uh, you know, and, and you're all just a bunch of miserable sinners. You have what you call forth. You will have what you say. And he's saying, oh, you wretched people, da, 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 going after him, right? And Pollyanna goes up to him as he's practicing his sermon. And he's going, and she's like, my dad would get frustrated at the congregation at times. He'd get, and she's like, what, what did he do? And he said, she said he had a trinket, and on it, a quote from Abe Lincoln. And Abraham Lincoln said, when you look for the bad in mankind expecting to find it, you surely will. Every time, any, anything you look at, you can find bad and you can find good. Anything. Like my dad says, if you're looking for the perfect church, if you're looking for problems, you will find them in anybody, even if he's perfect, because that's how mankind is. Mankind was so wicked that when perfect showed up, they found something wrong with him and still crucified him. We don't have the ability to judge in, in, in uh, good and evil. We have the ability to look to God's word for what's right and to receive the mercy when we were able to do what was right and to release it to others. That's what we're to do. To love. To love God and to love people. It comes back to it. You know, I was studying John a couple weeks ago. I went through John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Right? It's at, that last night and he talks to me. He talks about abide in me and all those things. And I'm sure there's a great theological message for it called the Sermon on the Blank. I've just been with Jesus. I know it's Jesus' good sermon, John 14 through 17. I took notes trying to put the puzzle together. He's like, abide in me. I abide in the Father, all this stuff. I did all these great calculations. You know what the whole thing came down to? Look, as you abide in me, you abide in the Father. Okay, my commandments and this, and your joy will be full and this, and you'll get, okay. I'm drawing arrows. I'm getting it all together. And it all came down to abide in his love. It was just one shortcut. <laughs> Live in his love, dwell in his love. You know, what the, you know what the safest thing you can do? I'm going through warfare. Stay in love. The devil can't touch you if you stay in love. When we open up places of bitterness, frustration, ir ITs, IMS ITs, irritation triggers, and the thing that's most tough about it is you're right. That is an IT, and they don't realize they're an whatever, irritation, and they think they're right, they're wrong, but you have to pass over it. That knowledge, that's what we got to do. And when you stay in that realm, you can't be touched. When we stay in that realm of love and faith in the love of God, because faith works by love. You can say, I believe, but if you don't have love, what's the point? You know, 1 Corinthians 12 talks about all the power of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, and I love teaching on them. It's a blast. And then 14 talks about them as well, and praying in tongues and how to do it, and this and that, 12 and 14. But right smack in the middle, it just pauses. Er, 13. If you don't got love, you don't got nothing. 
There's a reason it's right smack in the middle of walking in this power. Because the power of God and the supernatural gifts of God are only avenues for the love of God to flow. Not to feed your pride. And yes, pride can even be found in the glory. Pride can be found when you're operating for the Lord. Even doing things. I gave this much. I prayed for four people and they got healed. How about you? I gave this much to this ministry. I helped with VBS three days. Oh, you, yeah, you weren't there. You weren't there on the Friday. We were really getting after it, but thanks for your help. You can be prideful in helping and doing good. That's a little plug for you, Missy. Help out on VBS. <laughs> I, just, I just feel from the Lord for this Sunday that, you know, that, that preacher heard that message. He went up there and he's just like, there's 800 texts, because she told him. There's 800 texts on joy and love. It's a good Sunday. Let's enjoy it. I'm going to take every Sunday now talking about joy and love. Let's just be joyful. And they're like shocked, but amazed. And I feel the Prince of Lord just talking about it. joy and love. That's what he wants us just to. So what's today about? Loving people, walking in love, being joyful. What about Pentecost? Yep. Get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Great. But make sure you got love. Otherwise, you're just going to be a stiff Pentecostal. You know, Walt wasn't very religious, but I can tell you, and this movie wasn't very religious, but it was closer to God than a lot of churches. Because love was there, and God is love. And I want people to feel the love of God when they come in. Not that I condone everything someone does, because love would not let someone do something that's going to hurt their life. If someone comes and asks me, I'm making these decisions in my life, do you disagree? And I'll say, what does God's word say? Because he loves you more than you love yourself. And what does his word say is what the best thing for you. Period. And if there's things where you've been confused or, or whatever, he wants to straighten it out because he's got an awesome, he calls forth your ultimate purpose. And it doesn't matter what's happening in your life, God can change it. Period. God can work miracles. I remember watching services where there's people that had scars from cutting themselves and they disappeared right on the spot. I saw someone post on Instagram on it. I had scars and they prayed for the scars from me cutting myself. They disappeared. They were removed. There ain't nothing that the Lord can't do. Right. Amen? And you can believe God. It doesn't matter what's happened in your past. God just says, release what's happened to you from others and pass it on to other people. And that we don't walk in that blindness of pride of how good we are. You want to know a good, okay, I might hit some of you. Johnny Depp, Amber Heard. <laughs> who, who likes to watch it and judge it? Uh-oh, don't raise your hand. It's okay. But who, hello? You know why? Because it's so tasty. It's so tasty. Because I'll tell you how he's right and she's wrong. And I'll tell you how an awful person she is. She's so bad. I'm not going to say, you know, she did this. She did that. She did this. Knowledge. It's all knowledge. You know, he sued back to cover his name. I know a lot of ministers that could have sued a whole lot of people and haven't. How about them being honored? I'm getting real, but it's a trial out there, and people like to judge it. Why do you like to eat it? Because you like to eat of that, what they've done, and see what they've done. It's tasty. But what if, who, who's the person that's going to go and show mercy to the lady that thinks she's right when she's wrong? Because that's what transformed the woman in adultery. That's what, Zacchaeus, come down here. Now, how dare you? How dare you? You've been stealing. Zacchaeus, come down here. I'm eating at your place. Speaking to the good. You know who got ticked off at this? The religious people. Religion hates it. You gotta tell Zacchaeus everything that's wrong with him. Tell him he's a mess. Tell him he's stealing. Zacchaeus, come down here. We're eating at your place today. We're eating at your place. How about some love and joy for you, pal? Get some love and joy. I'm gonna love on you. I'm gonna call forth the good that's in you, Zacchaeus. He didn't even speak to the bad in him. Yet he was transformed. You constantly see Jesus transforming people like Pollyanna did. Because everybody told you all the knowledge. Told Pollyanna all the knowledge about everybody, why she should be mean to them back. And she passed right on over it. That's what we're called to do. How can we hear the cross and the message of the cross and what Jesus did? And not even a righteous person who had the right. And he's saying, Father, forgive this guy putting a nail in my hand. Father, forgive him. Father, forgive him. Father, forgive him. He doesn't know what he's doing. A lot of people, if they've done you wrong... They didn't know they were being an instrument of the enemy or they wouldn't have done it. They're ignorant. They're blinded. Don't treat them 
like you would treat yourself, treat them like Jesus treated you. And this all is really the great commandment that, that he gave in John chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Not as yourself. Love one another as I have loved you. And every time you do this, you put a smile on Jesus' face. And you can read through John 13. You can read through all John 15 and 16. He talks about that your joy may be full. Keep my commandments. Your joy may be full. What's his commandment? That you love one another. You want to be joy-filled? Love people. Like my dad always says, now you might leave here and you might meet someone in the shopping center. Tell them, what do you say? Tell them they went to this church, <laughs> another church down the road. No, but love people. Love people. And this is to all of us. I got hit by it. So, as I close, I just want us to love. I think of two, two things stick out to me. One is Corey Ten Boom. And I don't got time to tell her whole story, but you guys know it's, I was hearing her a couple months ago just talking about how in World War II, she was trying to help people raise money, and the guy was getting money to help protect them. The guy was supposed to protect them, actually turned them over to the Nazis, kept the money to make a profit on it, all of this. Later, her family, her, her, her siblings, her, her family dies, gets killed. She leads that guy to the Lord later. The Nazi that was treating her family wrong comes down front, she forgives him, leads him to the Lord. What? What? And someone I've heard talk about that actually died, and they, they were in heaven. They said she had, one of the, she had a massive mansion. I don't know what gifts she walked in, but, and, and we need the gifts. We need the power of God. But love, we cannot not have as our fan foundation. I think of my son, Benny. He's got a yellow blankie, and I'm done after this. He's got a yellow blankie that was stained when she was a kid. It's more of a yellow string now. It, this thing is shredded. It is a string and you can't touch it. You can't put it in the trash. You can't even talk about putting it in the trash. It is just because Benny loves that blankie because it's his yellow blankie. It doesn't matter how many more holes it gets. It doesn't matter how shredded it is. It doesn't matter if there's a million things wrong with it. It doesn't matter if he drags it in the mud. Do not touch his blankie because he has chosen to love it and not let go of it. Don't you talk bad about his blankie. And God... I really want us to walk in that love. And he, he has modeled that. Jesus modeled that to love. No matter how shredded the blankie becomes, no matter how messed up the person is, I love him because I choose to love him. Isn't that good?